All right, compound and absolute value inequalities. Um, very much related, absolute value inequalities lead to compound inequalities, or they are a subset of compound inequalities. So let's start with compound inequalities. And compound inequalities, like you've used this word compound in another subject area. Uh, yeah, chemistry. You didn't think about chemistry. Where else? English. What's a compound sentence? Do you remember? Two sentences, two combined. Two sentences combined. Two sentences combined. Like two sentences that, that were independent clauses. Will sound fancy. Like two sentences that would have stood on their own. We stick them together with a conjunction, makes a compound sentence. That's the same thing for what a compound inequality is. So let's solve and graph this compound inequality. 28 is less than 4 minus 3n is less than or equal to 34. So immediately you're like, oh, yeah, that's not normal looking. That's a compound inequality. If you took off either end of it, you'd still have an equality, right? Like that's one inequality if I cover up the less than or equal to 34. If I cover up the 28 is less than or equal to, you got another inequality. So there's two inequalities joined together, compound inequality. Our job is still the same. We want to get in by itself. Any thoughts on what we could do to accomplish that? Yes, minus four from all three parts. So again, this is weird. Usually you're thinking equation where there's two sides. This is like a three-sided thing. So let's subtract four from all three sides or all three parts. So 24 less than negative 3n less than or equal to 30. What would you like to do next? Divide by negative 3, which will flip those inequalities around. So negative 8 is greater than n is greater than negative 10. Which is true, but looks weird to math teachers. This is, this is not wrong, but math teachers don't like that. Do you know why we don't like that? feels like it's flipped. We like the smaller numbers on the left and work our way up. This is backwards. So there's a couple ways to, to, to figure out how to sort of flip it backwards. One way is to kind of read it backwards. This throws some people off because their brain says that's a greater than sign no matter what. And I'm like, well, it is a greater than sign, but if I read it backwards, it looks like a, come over here, it looks like a less than sign. So you can read it backwards and say negative 10 is smaller than n is smaller than negative 8. So if you're comfortable with that, that works. Other people, I think it's like more visual. You can like literally like flip that thing over or mirror it over or reflect it over. So negative 10 is, now we switch this around, less than or equal to n is less than negative 8. So either way, you can just kind of read it backwards and write what you say, or you can visually flip it over. Solve, yes, graph. Oh, I need to graph it. So I need n to be bigger than negative 10, but smaller than negative 8, which conveniently enough puts n in between negative 10 and negative 8. Uh, careful with the circles, open and closed, close and open. And so there's my answer. We usually wanted an interval notation, so let's go ahead and put that on there. All right, that's a compound inequality, sort of two inequalities 
sandwiched into one. All right, now let's talk about absolute value inequalities. Mouthful just to say it all. Absolute value inequalities. A uh, little reminder, we did absolute value equations on Friday. We did inequalities yesterday. And today we're going to like sandwich them together. And so all the rules from absolute value, we got to remember those. All the rules from inequalities, we got to remember those. We reviewed some of those in that last problem. And I got to put them all together to solve an absolute value inequality. Now, many of the steps are similar. So let's first isolate the absolute value. Right, we did that with equations. Get the absolute value thing by itself. Uh, what did we do next on absolute value equations? So we had to move things around initially. Sometimes you got absolute value equals 12. What was the next step? Okay. Make two separate equations. Write two, except they're not equations anymore. They're inequalities. So write two inequalities. Starred because it's a little bit more complicated than the equations, but it's that same idea of you got to split it up into two pieces. And then the last step was to check, because sometimes weird things happen with absolute values. Okay. Notes take longer today than they did with equations because we treat the less than and the greater than problems a little bit different. So I've got to show a couple examples of each. So let's worry about the less than problems first. Absolute value of x is less than 4. Right, couldn't, couldn't get much simpler for an absolute value inequality. So we think about our steps. Isolate the absolute value. Check. We just That's already done for us. Write two inequalities. Any guesses on what you think the first inequality would be? X is less than 4. So again, some parallel stuff with the equations going on. Just drop the absolute value bars. Any guesses on what the second inequality would be? X is greater than negative 4. Nice. X is greater than negative 4. Make sure that you change both signs. Flip the inequality and flip the sign. So again, paralleled with equations. Equations, you change the sign the positive negative thing, there wasn't really an inequality to flip. I guess you could say you still flip the equal sign, it just looked the same. And then what matters for less than compared to greater than is the word that goes in between here. Right? It's, it's rare that the, the word matters too much in math class, but it matters here. We're going to put an and in there. That means we want both things to be true. Uh, we'll need the overlap if we think about graphing it. So less than is and. Uh, well, they're already solved, so I can go straight to drawing a picture here. So let's see. Less than 4. Go overboard and color, the color code this thing here. So less than 4 would be left of 4. Greater than negative 4 would be this way. But I need both things to be true. So I need the overlap where both colors are would be the between negative 4 and 4. So my 
my answers are anything between negative 4 and 4 would work. Not really necessary to check this one, but what's the number that's nice between negative 4 and 4? I'd go with 0. So absolute value of 0 is less than 4. Yes. yes. Less than leads to and, and the split up works pretty similar to the split for equations. All right, let's do another one that's a little bit more complicated. Negative 3, absolute value 2x plus 1, minus 4, greater than negative 37. Well, right away you should be asking yourself, or maybe even asking me, or do you understand why, or any guesses on why this is in the less than section when that's clearly a greater than sign? Why is it going to flip? Eventually, I'm going to divide by negative 3. That's going to flip this around. And so that's a reminder that don't determine which type it is until you get the absolute value thing by itself. So yes, it looks like a greater than problem, but I can't really say that for sure yet. Let's see. Sophia, what, what do you... That says negative 37. Sorry, I'll really write it on my handwriting. Uh, Sophia, what do you want to do first? We could divide by negative 3, but then I'd be dealing with 4 thirds and 37 thirds. So it's technically correct, but there's a better option. Well, I don't want to mess with that yet. What about this? How could I fix him? Yeah, so let's add 4 to the other side. Negative 3, absolute value 2x plus 1, greater than negative 33. Trip, what do you want to do next? Divide by negative 3. And what do we need to be careful about when we divide by negative 3? Yeah, flip that inequality to a less than. Now it's a less than problem. So 2x plus 1, absolute value of 2x plus 1 is less than 11. Okay, now it's time to split them up. I'm nervous because I haven't called on people to split them up. But I have confidence in Jacob to pull this off. Uh, Jacob. What's the first inequality going to be? 2x plus 1 plus 11. Yes. So the first one, super easy. Just drop the absolute value bars. Moises, make us proud here. Um, 2x plus 1 is greater than negative. Very nice. Change both signs. I'm going to keep writing that. It gets a little old. You don't need to write it every time, but I figure if I write it every time in notes, maybe when we get to the test, people won't make that mistake. I'll have to I'll save myself. I won't have to write it then. Okay, this was a less than problem, so that means it's an and problem. So I'll be looking for the overlap once I get things solved. What did I I messed up something? And put 11 instead of 1. What are you talking about? Of course that's a 1. Um, running out of space, so I'm going to do this all at once. Subtract the 1, divide by 2, I get x is less than 5. Subtract the 1, divide by 2, x is greater than negative 6. Okay, so now I need to graph those and look for the overlap. And means both things have to be true. Greater than negative 6. Open circle. Greater than. Less than 5. Open circle. Less than. Overlap, where both colors are, is from negative 6 to 5. Um, parentheses on both. I don't want to include the endpoints. 
Let's check x equals 0 again, since 0 is in the middle. That should work because it's a shaded spot. Let's see, negative 3 times 1 minus 4 is greater than negative 37. Is that, is that a true statement? Negative 7 is greater than negative 37? Yes. Yeah. The negatives throw people off, but think about the number line. Negative 7 is bigger than negative 37. That's true. Okay, so less than, split up with an and in between them. Greater than, we're still going to split up. Oh, hold on a second before we turn the page. Less than is an, as an and goes in there. Greater than problems. know what other word we could put in there? Like logic kind of stuff here. Or. or. So for greater than, we're going to put an or in between the when we do the, the split up. Let's skip the super easy one and jump to the slightly harder one. Absolute value of x over 4 minus 6 greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, I think I see at least three steps here to pick on people. Gabby, what do you want to do first? I like that answer. Let's add the 6 to both sides. So x over absolute value of x over 4 is greater than or equal to 4. All right, our team, we've got the absolute value thing isolated now. Now it's time to break it up. What's the first inequality going to be? Uh, you said that wrong. I bet you would have written it correctly. Oh, yeah, with no absolute values. No absolute values. That's right. That's the whole point is we don't want the absolute values anymore. Um, greater than is an or in between there. Ella, what do you think the other inequality is? Follow the pattern we did already. Yep. Going to write it one more time. Change both signs. I bet I have to write that 15 times on the test. Not on any one test, but 15 people will get that message on the test because they'll mess something up in there. Okay, well now I've got two easier ones to solve. So x greater than or equal to 16 or x less than or equal to negative 16. So we'll graph them. Negative 16 and 16. Greater than or equal to 16, be that way. Less than or equal to negative 16, close circle to the left. So there is no intersection, but I'm not looking for the overlap. I'm looking for either or, like anywhere that's shaded. Anywhere shaded is part of my answer. So negative infinity to negative 16. Whoops, bracket, right, to include that. And then 16 to infinity. Um, what's the number I could pick here that, that would work, or that should work? I guess I'm checking. I don't know if it's going to work. So 16 should work. Um, barely, right? But it's shaded, so 16 should work. I'm going to pick, I like picking the negative numbers because those are the ones I'm more worried about. So I'm going to pick, I could pick negative 16. And then I thought, well, let's go one more, but I don't want to deal with 17 fourths. So I'm going to pick negative 20. I, I can pick anything in the orange that I want or anything in the green that I want. So negative 20 over 4, absolute value of that, minus 6. So let's see, that would be um, 
5 minus 6 is negative 1. Oh, negative 2. I felt the negative sign. That's why I was worried. Negative 1 is greater than negative 2. That's true. So I did it right. Shaded correctly. Okay, kind of the shortcut for less than and greater than. Is to make, like, sandwich up the words there, less than and greater. So there's your silly way to remember less than, greater. So when it comes time to split it up, split it up using the normal rules, change both signs. Less than gets an and, greater gets an or. By the way, less than usually usually is a lesser amount. It's the it's the between amount. It's a lesser amount of the number line, and greater ends up with a greater amount of the number line. So that's another little hint that can check when you're done is make sure that the less than's are pointing in and the greators are pointing out. Now. There's two weird things that can happen. So let's look at one of them and then talk about the other. Weird things like me being able to spell weird. The good news is the process isn't weird. The process is exactly the same, but the answer is weird. Absolute value of x plus 3 plus 5 less than or equal to 1. Again, I can call them popsicle sticks because the process isn't weird. process is the same. We'll worry about weird when we get to the end. So, Brenda, what do you want to do first? Uh, I like that. Let's subtract 5. So, absolute value of x plus 3 plus center equals negative 4. So, now we're ready to, to play the, the split up game. Yeah, Abby, you're up soon. Uh, Nicholas, what you, what's the first inequality going to be? Yep. Izzy, what magic word is going to go in between these? Which one? <laughs> here's our here's our guide: less than and greater. That looks like a less than sign. So this is going to be an and. So I'm looking for the overlap once I get there. Abby, what's the second inequality going to be? Good. Last time that I have to write this for the day. Change both signs, just like Abby did. Okay, so x is less than or equal to negative 7, and x needs to be, wait a minute, did something wrong here, I think. No, I didn't. x is greater than or equal to 1. Some of you should be pausing already, like, wait a minute. Others following the process, less than or equal to negative 7 greater than or equal to 1, but it's super important which word we picked. And means overlap. Where do they overlap? Nowhere. I told you this was a weird one. So there's no solutions. There's no solutions because there's no overlap. Do you think you might have seen that somewhere prior to us, like somewhere in the middle of the problem? You might have recognized where something was going on, Joaquin? Well, it was a negative on the absolute We had an absolute value less than a negative. It's like, wait a minute, that that's not possible. So this is another one of those where if we were really paying attention, we might have caught it right there and said, hold on, that's not going to work. But again, usually people aren't paying that close of attention. They're too focused on getting the process right. And eventually you figure out that it's no solutions. 
Uh, now I want to use the word or, but not in the normal way we're using the word or. There's another weird solution or weird uh, thing. So like on one end of the spectrum is nothing works. On the other end of the spectrum, any, any guesses? Everything works, all real numbers. And that happens when you sort of flip this around, when you say absolute value is greater than a negative. You're like, yeah, always. It doesn't matter what's inside there. Absolute value of something is always greater than a negative. So both of these could be caught early on if you're really paying attention. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Which I get it. You're focused on getting the, the process down. All right, so let's grab worksheet 1.6, and we're going to do one of them together. And the third page is worksheet 1-6. A couple things. Um, 1 through 4 don't have any absolute values on them. So don't get so excited about splitting things up that you split up things that don't need to be split up. Splitting up happens with absolute value. First thing that happens, or first time that happens, would be number 5. So that's like the the overzealous mistake. Like, I'm going to split it all up. Like, no, only absolute value gets split up. Um, two and four, it's like they've already split it up for you. They've got and and or already written there. So on two, you're looking for the overlap. On four, you're looking for anything that's shaded. But the reason I wanted to do one of these was number three. Can you uh, tell by looking at number three why I might have picked that one? What's different, weird about that one. It's annoying, and it's annoying because it has variables in all three parts of the inequality. Now, normally that would be hard to deal with, but this one's kind of rigged. There's something you can do to fix that. What well, could I... I mean, it's still an algebra rule, so you can, nothing tricky about it. It's just it happens to work out nice. What could I do to all three sides that would fix that problem of having ends everywhere? Let's subtract three ends from all three sides. And so it kind of has to be a rigged problem for that to work out. Negative 8, less than or equal to n plus 4, less than 10. I think you could take it from here, but we'll keep going. That was the main trick on that one. Subtract 4 from everybody. Negative 12, less than or equal to n, less than 6. Um, that's it solved, but let's make sure we read the direction and do what it asks us to do. Solve, yes, solve. Graph. All right, not bad. So I want all the n's that are bigger than negative 12 but also less than 6. The other way to look at that is like we literally wrote in in between negative 12 and 6. So it's all of the answers between negative 12 and 6. And then interval notation, negative 12 to 6. Being careful again with the equal sign, closed circle, bracket, not equal sign, open circle, parentheses. All right, with 20 minutes left, I don't know.